Hey hi, welcome to this part 1 video of creating a device backup tool using the Telnet Live date time and OS modules. I have given the links for the other parts of this video in description. Please check that out and also the slides program codes used in this video is also available in the description as a link. Okay, let's get into the video. We have already built a simple network with the three routers and my laptop all connected through a layer 2 switch and all of these components are on the same broadcast domain and subnet. There is nothing much going on there other than this. What are we trying to achieve? Actually, I have given that out already. We will be trying to take backup of three Cisco routers which we have in our topology. The constructs which we will be building throughout this project are a device IP text file which will have all the IP addresses to which we need our program to tell it into and take the backup of. We will create obviously the .py script named backup underscore telnet which will have the complete python code. Then when our python code gets executed, it will first create a folder with the name as the current system date. Then it will reach out to each of the routers using telnet and execute the show run command to take the backup. After taking the backup from a router, the same will be stored inside the data folder which we have just created with the name as the date itself. The file name of the backup will be the device IP plus date plus time and uh, we will see this in detail when we build our program. Hey, let's not code this out directly. Before that, let's spend a moment to understand the various pieces which we will be using today to create our program. Just a side note, for whoever is new to programming, on a very very high level, think of a module as an application that you install in any operating system. You install it and utilize its features, right? For example, we install VLC media player in our computer, which will support us to play video files which we may have in our system, correct? Similar way, in Python, we import pre-built modules. When I say pre-built, they are built by the online communities throughout the globe and made free for anyone's usage. We will be importing some modules in this program as per our requirements, say like Telnet Lib, OS and Datetime library. Some of these modules are written by the uh, online community, some are pre-built into the Python itself. Also, throughout this video, you will be hearing uh, new terms such as class, methods, etc which we will try to uncover in our future videos. Now, the first and important module which we will utilize in this program is the Telnet Lib module. This Telnet Lib provides a class which implements the Telnet protocol in Python. Basically, we are installing the Telnet client in our Python program. So, as I said earlier, after we implement this module in our program, we can utilize the features this module has. and Byte string is another keyword you will hear me saying while we code. On a high level, you can just think of it as a machine readable format. Say for example, when a computer stores a character A in its disk, uh, it will be saved in this format. I will leave all the links which I have referred in this video in the description box. You can read them out for more details on each of these topics. The Telnet Lite features, the so called methods in Python that we will use in this program are dot read until basically it reads until a given byte string expected is encountered meaning for instance uh, we can ask the program to wait until the router prompts for a username by mentioning the expected byte string to be username after seeing this we can pass in the actual username dot write it just writes a byte string to the socket example executing a command show run or show ip interface etc dot read all basically this will read all the commands output logs etc whatever have been generated during the telnet session that is made that is from the start to the end the important thing to be noticed here is this will read as bytes so we have to decode in order to present it to be a human readable format the next module is date and date time module these are two separate classes as the name implies, we can work with the date and time using these modules. It is a built-in module. The class date have a function dot today. It returns the current date on the system, whereas the class dot now of the date time module will return the current time along with the date. The OS module 
This is also a built-in module in Python. This helps in interacting with the file systems like Windows, Linux, etc. The os.path.join method will help in one or more path components to be joined together. We will see this in detail when we build the program. Next, os.mkdir. People who would work on Linux will be familiar with this. This is just to create a new directory. Okay, I think we had enough build-up to our program. Let's code this out. Okay, guys, as we discussed already, let's just first create a file device underscore ips dot txt in this file let's add all our device ips 192.168.122.20 and then 192.168.122.30 let's save this file similar way let me create one more file backup underscore locks this is also going to be a text file and i'm not going to have anything at this point of time in this backup logs next just create the python script backup dot py so let me move it here so the python script let's start with it so first let's import all the required modules Internet lib and put. I don't think uh, we need get pass here. We are not going to do get pass. We will do OS and then we will do date time import time. Sorry, date. Let's copy this and date time. Remember, remember, guys, date and the date time are two separate function. I mean, two separate classes. Next, what we are going to do, we are we will try to open the device IP list. Device underscore IPs dot txt. Uh, we will just uh, open it as a read-only file. That's enough for now. And I'm gonna open it as device IP file. Device IP, and I'm gonna create a list called device IP list. What this device IP list is going to have is have all the IP addresses that is available in the device IPs dot text in a list model. So it will be saved as a Python list. Okay. So how we are gonna do that is in device IP file read the contents, all the content, but while saving, do split the lines. Yes, S P L I T split lines. So and let's do one thing quickly. So we will print out just for the sake uh, when the program gets executed we will be able to see what is happening device ip list created here we will print out device ip list and then let's create a variable called as today Let's do this. So in the date class, tell me the today's date for, of the system. And just for the safer side, let me save this as a string. Okay. Then the next step is let's do a parent directory. So uh -huh. So let me open this. Where do I wanna co create the file? Let's create the folder inside of this telnet program. So let me copy the full path of this one. Let me collapse this screen again. So 
So this is the path parent directory. Under this directory, there will be a folder created with the date. The name of the folder will be the date. Okay, we'll pause here for this video and continue in part two. Please press the i button for the link to part two video. Also, check the description for the links to all other parts of this video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Let's learn together.